recording. All right, hello everybody. Hello, Void Dweller GXT Popple. Welcome back to Ready to Do and Double. Last time we went inside the mind of Utida. What dark secrets did this evil overlord have for us? Well, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, I know, you know. No, right, right, by now, we we know he's not evil, evil. He's just he's well-meaning and righteous, but a bit overzealous. And uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, we can see his own doubts about you know. He clearly wouldn't rather would not work about. Uh, work with these terrorists if he didn't ab feel he absolutely had to for this specific purpose. And now we're just about to get into his memories that need to be repaired. Uh, oh, hello. Oh, geez. I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you for that. Yeah, yesterday I was just kind of feeling out of it. So, like, it would not be a good stream. It just would not. I'm really curious to see what happened. Who the fraps are these other two guys? Like, seriously. Here we go. The memory started when Ukita and the others had discovered the three corpses. So, yeah, they discovered these corpses. So, it wasn't anybody we know. Like, what the actual frogs? Jeez. <laughs> Debug A. Ah! Dojima was lying dead in the room. To make my divorce, the jackhammer he and the others had prepared for the escape was broken. What in the world happened to your lover while I was unconscious? Akita's team left the room and students spotted a water team. they been searching the outer ring, running toward them. The rescue workers then entered the room. And the moment Watase came out, Akita instinctively grabbed him. Oi, hey, Captain Kasasaki, what in the world happened here? <laughs> what? Three people are dead, and even that jackhammer's broken. Oh, don't fix the memory right away, let it play out. So there's an opportunity not to fix it? Okay. I mean, I suppose I could always go back into it. You know something, don't you? Answer me. Just talk already. Okay, so just let it go, uh, let it go, let it go. The broken jackhammer meant that escaping through the pipe as planned was no longer an option. Why is Yuri a part of this? Okay, you can replace the scene in the- So I'll just put everybody low here, so, uh, is that- is that what I should do? To let the scene play out as normal? Or rather, as like the evil version of the memory. Oh, you were wrong? Oh. Okay, so I should just do this. Right, there, there's no harm to it or anything. Okay, um, I could always quick move. The broken jackhammer meant that escaping through the pipe plan was no longer an option. Perhaps we'll have to say Dojima and Yama for a different escape route. Or perhaps... been playing to escape in the lockdown the fit 16 well I do have a hard save right there so if there's um, any consequences please just tell me if I should just reload after I see it if I replay it it's fine okay that's fine Good. Okay. in the first place 
Is it really just a coincidence that the jackhammer broke? Or did someone break it intentionally? Nikita glared at Wadisu with his thoughts. Uh, here we go. Changed memory. Wadisu scowled at Nikita. Huh? Hell if I know. Anyway, what are you, why are you freaking out so much, old man? We're feeling down here because we lost one of our squad mates. Oh, he was choking him? <laughs> and yet your response is to choke me? What the hell's your problem? By the way, I'm not feeling a thing. You have negative strength. I, yeah, so. uh, no, I just... Well, whatever. Anyway, get your hands off me. Intimidated, Rukita unconsciously let go of Wadase. Oh, brother. Things sure took a somber turn, that's for sure. Kazumi! We haven't seen you in forever! Yes. I never thought Dojima would. Watase took his attention off Lukita and began talking with the others about the bodies. Oh, I see. He grabbed his. Oh, yeah. I see. He grabbed his collar. Like I, I was wondering. Lukita stood, stood behind them and felt the core of his body shudder. Hey, he just showed his true colors for a moment there. <laughs> oh God. Lukita himself had almost slipped up back there, but he had a feeling Watase's sudden shift in attitude was nothing to take lightly. Quickly grew scared of him. Now that he thought about it, he had been afraid of him from the beginning. Want to say that they had the muscles and body of a beast? <laughs> One punch from him, and Okita's scrawny body wouldn't stand a chance. Dojo was broken, bones were broken before he was killed. Even though he too had quite the strong body. Really? What the fuck happened here? The only one who could have done that. He's Captain Kasasaki, right? Scouts grew stronger. Okita decided to hide his fear as he continued with the search for the time being. As he got thought to himself as he finished viewing that memory. Uh, something is definitely strange about that memory. Damn it. So we need to put in more positive of feelings for what to say or it won't work? Uh, oh, well, that didn't really say much of anything new. Within about the speed of sound, got places to go, gotta follow my rainbow. It's weird that these two people aren't even in this memory, yet I have a chance to Type them up. Alright, now let's go. Oh, I see. Okay. You, you, I see. you see what the false memory was. You can miss out with seeing what the false memory is. I see. Thank you, Chiefs. Perhaps Watt say Doji and Hiyama for a different escape route? Perhaps they've been planning to escape in the lockdown lifted at 6.16 p.m. In the first place, is it really just a coincidence that Jack ever broke? Or did someone break it intentionally? Nikita glared at Wadase with those thoughts. Fix the memory. Here we go. What is he scowled at Ukita? Huh? <laughs> oh, this is the yeah. It's fading out. They do this gradual fade out for some reason. Nazi <laughs> go repair the false memory. 
No, how could I know anything? And who else would know? But subject Y2 stopped Okita before he could shout that. I forgot she was there with me. Uh, don't panic. People die there, right? If something like that happens again... Uh, uh, sorry. To think I, of all people, the great Ukita, would lose my composure like that. Ukita then started persuading himself. That's right. Calm down. Calm down and assess the situation. Their search of Lavo then continued, the events of what transpired in that room remaining a total mystery. What the fuck happened there? Okay, fixed. That was a very short memory. Next one. The memory was of after Ukita and the others had run through the gas, gas, gas. And arrived at the invention room. Debug, debug. Ukita and Watis, they headed deep into the room together to turn the sprinkler system back on. Watase was faking his amnesia to fool the rest of the group. It was about high time for him to reveal the truth. Akita chose his next words carefully, making sure to only say things the original Watase had known about the place. Smart. If memory serves me right, that large tank over there is full of water, nitrogen gas, and other fire extinguishing agents. Nitrogen gas? Here we go. Why the fuck was Enna a part of that previous one? Wait, was she in the room? At that time, jeez. There was no pretension whatsoever in Watase's reply. Impossible. Could his amnesia actually be for real? He asked Watase to be safe. Pac-Man, yeah. Are you sure you don't remember anything? That's why you went down to the basement on the name of the people you're trying to save? Oh, and it was in the room. Thank you, Cheaters. Okay. Natsuko repaired that false memory. Nothing. Tachibana said my memories would return in time, but it seems it's taking a while. Hello, Zer Megas, welcome to the stream. Akita couldn't find anything suspicious in the way it said that. If I'm to believe Captain Kasasagi's words, then that means Miss Tachibana and Maribe could not, must not, could, must not doubt his amnesia at all either. If anyone had noticed something suspicious about the way Captain Kazusagi was acting, it'd be Miss Tachibana and Moribe. So does that mean that Captain Kazusagi really does have... It was at that point that Okita finally decided to believe what to say out of Nisha. But now, I think the, the, the repaired memories are going to kind of fuck with the reality because uh, of the actions he actually took later on were because of the fake memories. I wonder how that's going to square in his mind. Hello, D. Von Fiegel. Welcome to the stream. But how did he get amnesia? Could someone have hit him on the head? If 
that's how it went. The only one who could have possibly done that was... One name immediately came to mind. Was he Ama behind all this? <laughs> that would be a crazy thing. If, like, th there's actually some kind of differentiation between uh, Dojima and Yama. It it's possible. Because Hiyama definitely died in a different way in a different place. And who the fuck were those others? Akita's heart shuddered when he reached that conclusion. If Hiyama had in fact received different orders from Q, then... Oh my god! What if Hiyama, like, was, like, super into Q and they said to, like, leave no survivors? Because, you know, they're, they're fucking terrorists. Like, make it, like, some kind of, like, a suicide action like just kill everyone just because they were scientists there like seriously but in all likelihood it's because of subject n like you know this caused them to kill each other because she's chaotic evil so if yama had in fact received a notice from q then Kita couldn't help but pray that Subject N, who'd been taken away by Hiyama, was still safe. At any rate, Ukita turned the sprinkler system back online, then resumed search with the rest of the group. Then when they arrived at B2 of Area 4's outer ring... Listen to me, old man. We found Hiyama's body. Oh, what? Is that true? That sudden announcement left Akita confused. But then... But then who was it that killed Dojima and those two researchers? No. Maybe it was still Hiyama. Maybe they killed the three of them and got injured in the process. And got caught in the fire afterwards. That's very possible. Like, who are those other two guys? Are those extra Q people? Like... Like, what the fuck? The more he thought about it, the less it made sense. Regardless, there was no way Yukita was giving up on a search for Subject N. Not, not seeking his friends, because we know that there, Q did have more people in Labo. Because, uh, you know, they got they had people to exchange all the fucking fire extinguishers and everything. Regardless, there was no way Yukita was giving up on a surface subject and a Nazi and his friends. Oh, and only one more. These are all pretty short. But we had that huge subject with his past memories. And Kat says, I really, I'm really excited to do June next. Because you know that they're going to save Kazumi for last. She seems the most possessed. And like that it would be the most dramatic confrontation. And we don't know what's up for Enna. I forget, it, I forget if Enna was there with the corpse in the corpse room. Along with everyone else. So we'll probably do her after after June. Or maybe before, who knows. But Cosme's definitely gonna be last. And this is only a half hour later. There's a memory of when the group was searching Area 5. Ukita and June had gone on ahead of the others to the neuroscience lab to look for Anna. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks, you. So, so Q just externally modified the fire extinguisher before they even got to Sirius to change them out. Oh, thank you for that. Jeez. Oh, and Anna was there with the corpse. Ah, so we're gonna have to do her as well. But she didn't show any signs. Does she have some secret, like, AG with her? It's possible. Jeez. 
Because uh, Anna did not show any signs of corruption. I do wonder if she had AD with her. Like an, a secret just for her. I really hope that she's like a secret agent that's come to help and not like uh, like someone who's like just a villain. Oh god. Like a secret agent who was investigating Labo's, you know, test subjects and like got caught up in all this. Like it would also explain why she knows so much about um, ter the terrorists. They found her starting up one of the computers in the room. The words Akita had once heard long ago flashed back through his mind at the moment. Curiosity killed the cat. It will be best for Junior Fellows to remember that phrase. Oh, just Jenna. Okay. Kita turned to Anna and shouted at her right after that. Oh, thank you. Seriously, Jace, thank you for remembering all the... <sighs> thank you for remembering all the details. So Anna had AD at the time when they were near a subject end, so she's safe. Okay. So it really is just June and then Cosme after this. Akita turned to Anna and then shouted at her right after that. Stop it, Miss Tsubakiyama. What do you think you're doing? Uh, well, um, uh, uh, there are always these machines that I've never seen before. Uh, so I just got curious, I, uh... I don't know what you want to do with that. Just get away from that computer right now. I'm telling you this for your own safety. Why? Why? I'm going to be in the United States. I'm going to be able to get the information. They conduct research related to national policy here. And it'd be best not to, to not recklessly go and looking for information in this place. You will be in danger if you do otherwise. When he said that, a bewitching smile suddenly rose down his face. Oh, so that's why. You really are worried about me, aren't you? Mr. Ukita. Huh? Uh, oh, yes! <laughs> you don't look all that reliable. But you've got some surprisingly good parts about you, huh? <laughs> Anna said that, then drew up close to Akita. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing, really. <laughs> Just thinking about how nice you are. Uh, nice? Well, you know. Yeah, she's totally a femme fatale secret agent. Yeah. Being in this type of situation. Makes me want a man like a lion. See? But Captain Kasasaki is a bit scary. So. True, what if he was like that, but. Are you Gasats no Tokori? Majime no Hitogas. It's weird, we, we didn't even get to the false memory part yet. The thing is, I like serious men more than insensitive guys like him. And it then touched Yukita's arm. <laughs> Electrical current! 
Sora and ran through Akita's body at that moment. <laughs> Is this really the time to be talking about this? Uh, and besides, a Maribe is here too, you know. Uh, she is just little girl. No mind to the adults in the room. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. Looks like that little girl's gone off somewhere. It's just the two of us. Huh? Ah! The unit left the room without him even noticing. <laughs> now that the kids are gone. Why don't we have a little chat? A little chat? We need teamwork to get out of here alive. Yes. <laughs> Ukita is, is like, Natsuhiko, whatever you do, don't delete this memory! <laughs> I will never, ever even become close to getting a, a woman like this in my lifetime. Please, I beg of you, this memory is all I have. <laughs> But I've been thinking that we're lacking in intimacy. So, you see where I'm getting at. I'd like to take the chance to get more intimate with you. That's... Before Yukita could finish. The door behind him suddenly opened up. Damn it! What has they cock blocked me? I will kill him for sure. He turned around to slide to see June Watase and the others standing there. June had probably called him over. Watase was glaring at Akita. What the hell are you guys doing? And immediately separated herself from Akita at the moment and spoke. I don't know. Well, hell if I know! Mr. Okita here just got pissed off all of a sudden when I started fiddling around with these computers. He was so scary! And then he grabbed me by the arm and started lecturing me! <laughs> what? Akita felt him over astonishment run through him when he heard Anna's lie. But then Cosme cut in. Mr. Okita, could you explain the meaning of your actions? Uh, uh, I, uh, uh, no! I was just telling her to be careful, not to look at any top secret information. The things contained from Area 5 onwards are all about as top secret as you could possibly get. Even if we can make it out of here in one piece, I strongly suggest that you do not tell anyone on the outside about what you saw here. The consequences for doing so could prove unexpectedly dire. Well, I was given his explanations. Pool, a pool of doubt welled up within Okita. What is that woman's deal? What was she trying to achieve by talking that way to me earlier? And it was certainly calm at the moment, the complete opposite of the way she just acted minutes ago. As if she'd forgotten all about that. Does she seduce men so she can try to get them to do a bidding? 
Lally looked over carefully. Anna was quite a beautiful and gra glamorous woman. Perhaps she used her own body as bait to lure ordinary men. But why did she try to seduce me, of all people? However, in the end, Yukita never got a step close to answering that question. Nausicaa thought to himself as he finished viewing that memory. So that's weird. I had to actually lower her? I, I had to actually put her lower? That is so weird. It's not that I don't get where you're coming from, Mr. Okita, but I doubt that Professor Zubakiyama is that kind of person. That said, look like repairing this one's going to be a little tricky. I'll just probably readjust his feelings for teach for, to a more natural level. Oh, okay. And that was the uh, state of Okita's altered memories. Has this been enough to fix Mr. Okita's memories? <laughs> you just let it play out because it's one of the funniest scenes. It really was. If you're unsure, you can always go back through his memories and try repairing them again. It's not like time means anything here. You're right. Besides, it doesn't feel like this is the end of it either. Back when he had erased a lot of his malice, of his spirit, and stuff in him lost his brain, even after he'd repaired all his memories. It was highly probable that it was still in Okita's brain as well. Yep, each level has a boss. I have to erase her to bring Mr. Okita back to normal. Unless he could steal to resolve and slip away from that memory. Terabyte disc. Terabyte disc! <laughs> oh my god! Dang. Nakazawa loves the concept of the terabyte disc. I wonder what Nazi, what uh, Nakazawa thought when he actually got like a terabyte a one terabyte hard drive <laughs> you know uh, portable hard drive I bet he was like finally after all these years the terabyte disc <laughs> okay let's go rolling around at the speed of sound Oh, if I went to it now, I would get a bad ending. That's interesting. Well, too late. Here we go. It was in Ever 17. It was also in Remember 11. Uh, gee. It played a role there, but it was kind of the worst part of Remember 11 because it, it was a bootstrap paradox in Remember 11. Which, like, because everything else was so really well thought out in Rem Remember 11, so I didn't like that at all. That, uh, you know, the, the terabyte disc was just a bootstrap paradox. No, uh, Natsuko said to put it at a more natural level, so I just put it neutral. Here we go. Now she got repaired the false memories. Uh, I'm sorry. Just then, Lotsi and the rest of the group came running in. Oh! <laughs> just skips ahead. Okay. So this was, this was kind of a memory that Subjian added. Uh, hey, what happened this time? Not good. It's too late for Subject Y2 and Captain Katsusagi. The other three come into contact with Lava's top secret information, though. He was actually trying to be a good guy here. I thought he was being an asshole here. He was actually trying to be a good guy.
he'd have frantically warned the others about the top secret information. Oh wow, so that is the only sense of sympathy in the game that requires you to have a neutral level. Seriously, I that that wow. Huh. I really thought he was threatening us there. Jeez. The things contained for every five volumes are about as top secret as you can possibly get. Even if we can make it out of here in one piece, don't give it up, Luffy. I strongly suggest that you do not tell anyone about on the outside about what you saw here. Dang, dude. You really sound threatening. The consequences for doing so could prove unexpectedly dire. Those words came straight from the bottom of Akita's heart. Now those corrupted memories have been purified. Do do do. Now. Let's see goes arrived. At the memory right before Akita had been affected with subject ends malice. Be careful, Ikuri. Ends just up ahead. It's a good thing. It's a good thing the different ends can't communicate, or else this would be really bad for us. Uh, Time to go in. Time to go into the boss room. Yes, I got it. I'll be careful this time to make sure she doesn't corrode me like she did back when I encountered her in Walter Say's memory. Natsuko pulled himself together and looked into Akita's memories. So one began where Akita saw Sergeant Anne's dead body. I knew it! This is where Mr. Akita was infected with malice. But something felt off. It was too quiet. Confused, Natsuko looked around only to find Mr. Akita was the one, only one there. Huh? But weren't the others with him at the time? No, that wasn't all that was odd. Nazi got looked around, took around of his own accord, which meant... This isn't Mr. Okita's memory. It's just like with Walter say. A voice then filled the air. It would appear that you realize this is no ordinary memory. No? <coughs> oh. Nazi got gasped and watched and surprised the subject on body. So we stood up. Subject N! Nope, that is incorrect. I'm not Subject N. On the other hand, nor am I Keiji Okita proper. She was talking much differently than the spirit of Subject N that Nazi had encountered in Watsuse's head. Also, look how that spirit, speech, and personality have been strongly influenced by Watase. This one had most likely been influenced by Ukita. Natsuko talked back to her as he thought that. Then what are you, malice incarnate? Pretty much. Yeah. No, to get right to the point. I'm BC Particles. What? Such so an cheered at Natsuko. Are you familiar with the informational field theory? Huh? No, I can't say I am. You are a disgrace to your mother. The informational field theory began as a hypothesis proposed by your mother, Dr. Miyoko Tenkawa, 16 years ago. 
Ah. Uh. Now that she mentioned it. Yeah, I'd seen a book about that in the reference room when his mind was linked with Lotus's. Yes! I remember this. This was so cool. The introduction to the informational field theory. In forward in modern physics, all phenomena that shape the natural world can be explained with four fundamental forces. But there are phenomena such as the accelerating universe and so on that cannot be explained by these four fundamental forces alone. It's become clear from recent high precision observation that the rate in which the universe expands accelerates with time. From that survey, that the theory of an unknown energy, such as known as dark energy, repulsive gravity, was born. But if dark energy supposedly does exist, then what is it? Various conjectures have been conceived, but they are all merely speculation. Thus, I continue to look into that force as a perspective of an elementary particle physicist and formulated hypothesis. Could it be information? If a fifth fundamental force does exist, there's a high possibility that it is, in fact, information. It's a numerical formula to express the equivalence of information volume and energy. Then after deriving its value, I discovered that said value completely matched up with the rate of universal expansion. In other words, <laughs> Wait, but what does my mom's thesis have to do with you? It would appear that the apple fell far from the tree. You can use your mother's thesis to explain my existence. Just as the introduction said, information is essentially energy. And that information energy is spread using BC particles as an intermediary. Even if you're incapable of BC, this process is constantly occurring. Right in the middle of something that everyone possesses. What's something? The girl tapped her head when Natsuko asked that. No, the brain. BC BC particles called it by the whole goddamn globe. Naturally, that includes people's brains as well. And the impressions and sensations that result from people's mental activities are constantly converted from the electrical signals in their brains into BC particles and are thus preserved through them. In other words, there are BC particles lying around in Okita's brain that reflect his mental activities. Subject N then transferred her own thought information into Keiji Okita's brain. When she did that, the BC particles that carried her thought information mixed with the BC particles that were in Keiji Okita's brain to begin with. Those two groups of BC particles interacted, becoming a new distinct group of BC particles that stayed in his brain. I am those particles. So basically, you were born from the blending of Mr. Okita and Subject N's spirits. Spirits! I never imagined Dr. Tenkawa's very son would believe in something so occult. Well, 
Listen, I'm just trying to use shorthand to, uh, to, uh, to better understand and comprehend the situation. Well, if that's how you want to interpret it, then go ahead. That's not the important matter at hand, anyway. What is important is that I most certainly exist here. Exist? Yeah, you exist, all right. Asiko glared at her and spoke in a clear voice. Mr. Okita suddenly going nuts is proof of that. But how much logic you pile in front of me, I have only one opinion. And that is I will bring Mr. Okita back to normal. Those thoughts won't change. Whether you're a spirit of BC particles or whatnot. Oh. Then are you saying you'll erase my existence? I mean, you can indeed eradicate me just by wishing for me to vanish. Frickin' sense of sympathy is broken AF. And In the end, I'm nothing more than a vague bodiless entity. So even if you erase me, it will not weigh upon your conscience in the slightest. Is that not what you're thinking? Like hell, it won't weigh away on my conscience, but I have to do it. After all, that's what Mr. Okita wants as well. Huh? That's what he wants, you say? Isn't that obvious? At his core, Mr. Okita is a man of justice, so... Does your ignorance know no bounds? You're basing that delusion on your own imperfect understanding of him, boy! Oh! She glared at Natsuko. Just what is it that you know of the man known as Ukeji Ukita? Because of his You have only obtained incomplete information regarding him. The surface of his memories and his motive for committing this act of terrorism! That's all! Yet you claim to know his desires. How presumptuous can you be? Do you understand now? In the end, even sense of sympathy is nothing more than incomplete communication. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! Instrumentality! That's her goal! She wants instrumentality! I fucking knew that was gonna happen! Okay, it wasn't it wasn't Yuri! Oh my god! <laughs> yep, I fucking thought so yeah, okay, if it's not Yuri, then that's what she wants. Yup, 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 yup. <laughs> oh my god! Humans can never reach a mutual understanding no matter how much they talk, touch, 
Or use BC on each other. They just try to understand each other by looking at fragments of information about each other. But by being in Okita's brain, I've become one with him and seen his entire life from birth to this very moment. Are you sure, Jis? That's that's what it sounds like. It really sounds like she wants to become like, like merge all of humanity into one thought existence here. I am the only one who can claim to understand him. The only way to truly understand another is to become one with them. That's why I gave Okita just what he wanted. What he wanted? Take this, for example. The scene in front of them changes the moment after Jen said that. With memory when Ukita had pointed a gun at what was it? Zejak na segi to warau ga isa. Da ga kore ga boku no sentaku da. Go ahead and laugh. I know it's fragile justice, but it's my choice. Kimi o koro shite kono jokyo ga owaru nara so shio. Oh my god, I gotta read Jesus' comment. You've seen his entire life from birth. Yes, and let me tell you, he was born with that hairline and color. Poor bastard. You're telling me. <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Jace. If killing you means it'll put an end to all this, then I'll do what I must. If I don't, Captain Gotsai will kill both Subject Y2 and Natsuhiko. I'll protect everyone, then my life will finally have meaning. Even if it means staining my hands in sin for the first and last time in my life. No, Dane. Koreva Kare no nozomi sono mono janaka. Well, is that or is that not his very own desire? Huh. You say that Okita changed because I'm in his brain? Please! I'm nearly knocked over the first domino. Oh. <laughs> Preposterous. I just gave him a little nudge. That's all. Okita was and both Okita and I wish to punish the wicked and protect the weak. That is why we feel Captain Kasasagi must be punished. You've done nothing more than make a fuss. Just because the way Okita was acting earlier was a little different from the Yokita that you know. Cool stories. Still mu still brainwashing. And then he just releases her. <laughs> now then, let me ask you again. Does Yokita himself truly desire my erasure? Natsuko couldn't help but fall silent. She was just a formidable of an enemy of Sergei and Wadisu's head, but in a totally different way. Natsuko could feel his fighting spirit whittle away, away even though he hadn't already been co co corroded by malice. Is, is it really okay to erase her? 
I'm not just butting my nose into Mr. Rokita's business where it is needed. Well, I mean, didn't she do it first? I'm starting to think that. Your Yuri's voice. Hikuri, no! You mustn't let her logic get the better of you. Don't give her a chance to talk next time. No! Even if Mr. Kia's desire is to judge the wicked, he would never still still never punish Captain Kasasagi. Because that's something the real Mr. Kia never even considered. He ceased to be himself from the moment his spirit blended with ends. So you have to bring Mr. Hita back to his true self. Oh. Nezuko felt this night of leaving fighting spirit revive at Yuri's words. And that meddling Yuri. My other selves should take care of her first. Composure began returning to his confused mind. It was then that he noticed the contradictions in Sepshitan's reasoning. You almost had me, Subject N. Whatever do you mean? Mr. Okita's true desire was, wasn't just to protect the wicked. It was also to never kill anyone. Oh my god! She hates no! <laughs> There's no way you could have overlooked that, could you? You got me! I'm just crazy. <laughs> Cedric instantly laughed at that comment. Splendid insight. It would appear that you're not as stupid as I assumed. Well, actually, no, I am. That was just Yuri who figured it out. Of course not. Maybe I can't understand Mr. Okita in the slightest. I mean, who can? But in spite of that, I looked through his memories the whole time with the intention to understand him. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Though either way, it's still an incomplete understanding. A look of resignation rose to her face. She then sighed and looked at Nazika. <laughs> but it truly is a shame. Just a bit more and I would have corroded into you. And then I could have had the whole world come to an understanding. Wouldn't that be beautiful? All minds linked together. Complete understanding of all humanity. I may not have succeeded, Natsuhiko. But another me will! Huh? You didn't notice? I'd already begun to worm my way into your mind from the moment I started listening to your opinion. <laughs> Though I feel thanks to that unexpected fly getting in my way. And then it would have been the end of the world. Two. Just one more step. And you and I would have become one. Then you and Ukita could have killed Captain Kasasagi together. Those words sent shivers down Natsuko's spine. You... You really are malice incarnate. 
僕を消しに来たんだろ<笑> You only just realize that Isn't that why you came to erase me? そうだなそうだな Yes, you're right I'll take a look back at him and spoke そろそろお前を消すよ I'm sorry, but it's about time for you to go now そうだな僕ももう悪あがきはよそ You're right. I'll stop putting up any fruitless resistance. でもその前に一つだけ頼みがあるのだ。いいか。Oh, but、uh, could you promise me something before you erase me? なんだ。What? 僕の存在を浮きたは自覚していない。だからせめて君に覚えていてほしいんだ。Oh god, wouldn't Ukita be thrilled to know that the one woman who actually likes him is a freaking. what, 11 year old psychopath? He's bent on total and complete subjugation of all humanity. I'm sure he'd be thrilled about this. Ukita is not aware of my existence. So at the very least, I'd like for you. to remember that I was here. 僕がただの悪意の塊などではなく確かに心があったこと That I was more than t h a t was incarnate That I was a being with a mind 僕は浮田のためを思って悪意を行使し君を侵食しようとしたそのすべては僕の意思だ I used my malice to try to grant Ukita's wishes and worm my way into you. That was all out of my own will. Wakaru daro. Niktai mo no mo motanai boku ni. Tashka ni hokoro ga sonzai shita nda. She is kind of questioning her own existence here, which is super fascinating considering the state of being she's in. You see what I'm getting at? Even someone who possesses no body nor brain like me. Does indeed exist. Cogito Ergo Sum. Vare o mo you any vare ari. Deva so mo stai. Snouchi. Cocoroto a nandaroka. Cogito Ergo Sum. I think, therefore, I am. Then, in that case, what is the core, that is, the mind that is aware of those thoughts? No, nai de okonare the seishin katsu no kotoka. No, ga naked of a cocoro a sonsai shie nai. Is it the mental activities occurring in the brain? Can a mind only exist in the presence of a brain? No. A mind is an accumulation of information. No, 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 Cannot use the presence of her absence of a brain as a basis to determine whether or not something possesses a mind. That applies even if I am nothing more than a gathering of information energy spread by elementary particles. Ooh, is that foreshadowing something? Even if I were digital data recorded into a medium, I still have a mind. My life lasted for only a few hours, but I most certainly did exist. I can disappear in peace. As long as you swear to never forget that. Yes, I won't forget you, Subject Ten. I will remember you over and over again in therapy. She smiled happily when she heard Natsu could tell her that. Thank you. Special observation target NA2. It was the name of the one Ukita had tried to protect. At the bottom of her heart, the girl understood Ukita's lonely sense of justice. Natsuko looked towards her with respect. 
as your race turn. Enemy, enemy, and enemy. Ooh, what's this? Now Zico and Yuri return to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. Akita was still unconscious. Watase looked at Natsuko and Yuri from the side. You guys done? Yes, how long did we take? Well, only about five minutes, give or take. Oh, that's interesting, Watase. We can actually um, use that to kind of measure the time dilation. I do wonder if Odyssey would be interested in that. Like, uh, just to, to measure the exact time dilation uh, between not uh, being in the psychic world and not. Only about five minutes, give or take. From an objective perspective, the entire affair only took a small amount of time. Within that time. Natsuko and Yuri had their second encounter with Subject M and erased her once again. Suddenly pain ran through Natsuko's head. Uh-oh. <coughs> ah! He held his head and leaned against the wall. What the fuck? Uh, what's wrong, Hikuri? My head! What? Are you okay, Natsuko? Do not die before we can heal my fucking girlfriend, I swear. Ah! The headache felt like the one he had had when he arrived at Labo this morning. And it was subtly different. Bizarre discomfort took his brain alongside the pain, and his five senses hazed over as well. Oh my god. What the hell? It's like molten lava's pouring into my head. Lava in your head? Oh shit. Oh shit. I knew it. There had to be a side effect. It it can't be. The after effects of contact with N. <laughs> Natsuko gasped at Yuri's suggestion. very possible come to think of it. When Subject N came into contact with people, she instantly destroyed their personalities, turning them into almost completely different people. Come into contact with her about the risk of her corroding into you. The truth of the matter was that Sojan inside Watase and Sojan inside of Ukita both tried to corrode into Natsuhiko. Natsuhiko shook off her mouse and erased her both times. Coming into contact with her multiple times in a row could be a lot more dangerous than I thought, couldn't it? In such a short span of time, Natsuhiko had fought twice with an opponent who was trying to corrupt him. It turned out to be even more of a mental and psychological burden on him than he had expected. Maybe Yuri should give the next one a go to give him a break? Yuri should do the one inside June. What well, to say Yuri looked at Natsuko's face with concern. Hikori, are you okay? Uh, 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 yes, I'm okay. Natsuko forced a smile as he answered. 
You're right, Jace. Corroding into you does sound like the name of a psychological horror romance. It totally does. More importantly, are you okay, Yori? Yeah, that's right. They were doing like a leapfrog thing. Uh, I think I'm okay. It wasn't as if I was directly connected to Dokita's mind after all. Yeah, I think if um, if Yuri does June, and if Natsuko could be Yuri's backup, like he like she was to him, I think that should alleviate his burden. And only came into contact with me indirectly through you. So her influence was minimal, I guess. I see. Well, that's good then. It appeared that Natsuko served as sort of a padding for her. Yeah, exactly. At any rate, as long as Yuri was okay, Natsuko was fine with that. With that thought in mind, he shook his head and slapped his cheeks. <laughs> his senses soon came back to him. He still had a headache, but it faded considerably. Oh, does anyone have any ibuprofen? <laughs> yes, looks like I can keep going, no problem. No problem. You sure you're okay, Natsuko? You're as pale as a ghost, you know? Some of the others have to be infected with malice, too. Are you sure you can keep up with the erasure? Yes. I can. Keep them coming. Natsuko gave a strange display of bravado. At any rate, this was not the time to give up. If Natsuko couldn't do it, then Yuri would have to be his replacement. Oh no. More importantly, we need to make sure if Mr. Okita's malice has disappeared or not. I think we're probably good, but better safe than sorry. Yeah, that's true. Guess I'll try to wake him up. Old man! Wake up, old man! Yo! After a few slaps on the cheek, Okita finally groaned. <laughs> Good, he's awake. <laughs> Captain Kasasagi? Kita looked around with vacant eyes. Mr. Kita, are you okay? How do you feel? I mean, do you feel like malice disappeared from within your mind or anything? <laughs> what a question. Huh? Not so quick, Hiko and Yuri are here too. And there's Mashiro over there. What in the world? What? I forgot what happened. Salyu has completely left the story, which is too sad. What in the world? Kita's eyes widened. From the looks of it, Subject Sun's malice had faded from him. Natsuko sighed in relief and answered his questions. It's a long story, but blah 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 blah. 
Natsuko summarized the situation Ukita had been put into. A subject ending is the ability to sense of sympathy on Ukita to manipulate his memories and amplify his malice. But how Natsuko and Yuri were also sense of sympathy users and were just the only ones who could cancel out that malice. Once he finished hearing Natsuko's explanation, Ukita muttered with a bitter look on his face. So, in other words, my personality was overwritten with BC. I think that's an appropriate way to put it. I see. So, it's an ability far more powerful than we had imagined. He just spoke regretfully and then licked a water save with the gas. Then, does that mean the same happened to Captain Kasasagi? Uh, yeah. Well, something like that. I don't think you can't amplify my malice. I shot at the kids. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Natsuko erased all of my memories and self-defense. He then finally restored my memories for just, just a little bit ago, you see? I see. Nikita muttered that with a complicated look on his face. Who else do you still suppose is still infected with malice? I'd say the most likely candidates are Jun and Miss Tachibana. Uh, wait a second, what about Saryu? That girl came at me with an axe, you know? Hey, that's right, she's at the bottom of the fucking stairs, isn't she? How did she get how did she get back down? Like, seriously. Jeez. She's unconscious. God damn it, I, I keep forgetting where people are. Yeah, she, she yeah, she's there, but she's unconscious. So she should be able to go back in the story. But her and Mashu are like down for the count in this part here. Natsuko thought for a second. How you may have a slight eccentric personality, but would she go as far as to take such drastic measures? Possibility that Saru's infected with malice isn't completely out of the question. To be, to be honest, he was frightened by the thought. Saru already had a dangerous side to her. If she were infected with malice, her actions would be com completely unpredictable. <laughs> Oh my god, I gotta read. I gotta read that. Jeez. My personality was rewritten. Oh no, I hope I didn't make anyone hate me. I have a real complex about people thinking I'm a crazy evil psychopath. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was missing from the bottom of the stairs. Uh-oh. So, oh yeah, I forgot. Okay, so she might be. In that case, who's the most dangerous of them all? That would mean Moribe, wouldn't it? Huh? Why would June be? To be honest, about two hours ago, I attacked her from behind and stole the bullets from her. What? Why would you do such a thing? Well, I thought I'd need a weapon if I want to oppose Captain Kasasagi, and I had the gun, so... It is very possible that she's bearing a grudge against me now. Now Natsuko understood the reason June's head was bleeding and why she was wandering around with that engine cutter in hand. Oh, and to make matters worse, the same gun got snatched by Teach. By Professor Tsubakiyama? 
もともと先生が持っていたあの銃さ一度はバラして三つに分けたが結局すべて先生の手に戻ったってわけだ Teach with the one who had that gun to begin with It was split up into three parts but I guess it all got back to Teach's hands in the end His words made Natsuko uncomfortable ちょっと待て渡せ先生の持っていたあの銃についてなんだけど Hold on a second, what to say? But that gun Professor Zawakiyama had. Wasn't that one of the guns you guys prepared? No, it wasn't. The guns me, Doji Man, and Hiyama had were NZ 75s, three in total. But the gun Teach had seems to be completely different. What? Then where did that gun come from? There shouldn't have been any guns in Labo under the, other than the three at Watsu's comrades had brought in. And yet Anna had a gun, which meant. That's most likely Chi's personal gun. She was probably lying about finding it in Labo. Huh. Watsuka was aghast. Why would an ordinary high school teacher like Anna have her own gun? If she was neither a terrorist nor a lavo, then. Who in the world is Professor Tsubakiyama? Once Natsuko said that, Yuri's eyes widened as she figured something out. Uh, maybe. Maybe she's actually with Security Sector 6. Security Sector 6? Security Sector 6? Yuri nodded as Nazi gun wants to tilt their heads in puzzlement. There is a secret section of the Rokume City Security Department in charge of cover ups. As Labo's pawns, they do a variety of dirty work. They perform cover ups of lava related affairs, including communicator abduction, among other things. <laughs> That's a thing? I mean, you saw it in my memory too, didn't you? I remember how, after the fire nine years ago, these two people forced their way into the hospital and tried to take me away to Labo. That was Security Sector 6. Now that she mentioned it, that name had shown up in Okita's memory, too. Furthermore, Natsuko remembered hearing rumors of them back in his childhood. Seven Wonders Number 6 Monster five people are captured by a secret task force. Working under Rokumi City Security Department and are imprisoned underground. Those rumors were true. I finally felt that all of the seven, seven wonders had hidden meaning behind them. Could those have been no mere urban legends, but rather something someone had intentionally tried to spread? Was it a way to disguise the sinister's truth as a simple child's gag, or was it a conspiracy someone had tried to leak to the public? Natsuko pondered that question and Kita spoke up. Indeed, I've heard of them before. But I guess I could say it's only a matter of course that they exist. Such underhanded forces only come naturally with a high interest facility, an organization as this one. Normally, you would commission an organization or enterprise to fulfill that role, but. In Labo's case, the city itself goes through the links to provide such services. This all sounds like a bad joke. Well, 
Well, it's not just Lava where those ethics are broken. Rokomi City's government is the conduits with them too, after all. Masiko ground his teeth as he heard that. Up until now, he'd loved the town he was born and raised in. That didn't change even when Anna told him about the truth of the world. Now Rokomi City was a fortress built to, to protect communicators from that world. He had thought that security department surveillance cameras were all to protect the townspeople. But even the city's an enemy too, isn't it? Both Lava and the city government were working cahoots to create this abnormal world, weren't they? Perhaps his dabbling in Lava Sane and Kita's memories had intensified that bitter feeling of his. Natsuka suddenly remembered the time he was in front of the city gate with Salyu. A kind of an off-putting place. Hmm? You think so? It almost gives the impression that the whole city is locked down. Her words were on the mark. Ever since he got stuck in lava, Natsuki God wanted to get out. The outside of that birdcage was just a bigger prison. Rokumi City itself. So Professor Bakuyama's teaching job was just a temporary front, which is actually part of the Rokumi City Security Department. Is she working to ensure we don't escape? There's no conclusive evidence of that. Or she works for the city government, slipping in undercover as a Rokumi Academy teacher. Should be no problem at all. And then she'll be able to put the students under close surveillance. If any of the communicators demonstrate some sense of sympathy. Indeed, it wouldn't be strange at all if someone were to have that role. But even if she had an undercover role, oh, sorry. he still worked normally as a teacher, you know? So why would she come to Labo today? I don't know that much. Perhaps she just had a hunch about the terrorist information. Or perhaps it was just a coincidence. In any case, now that she's here, she might be working to help cover everything up. Thinking along those lines, there were several things that came to mind. Like how she had closed her heart to the kids. How she recommended that they turn themselves into the security department when the kids were running away from them. If Professor Sobakama was with the security department, that means when she heard about the terrorist plot from us, she must have gotten on guard and concluded they come to Labo. Eventually, Watase broke his silence with a sigh and kind of spoke up. So the point is, we should assume everyone's dangerous, regardless of if they're infected with malice or not. Yes, but nevertheless, everyone needs to be brought here. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping too, Void Dweller. In that case, who should we take care of next? Upon hearing that question, Natsuki clearly thought of Salyu. Since she had been acting independently in the entire time, she most likely had less information to work with than everyone else. She'd get dragged into a fight without understanding any of the circumstances and get hurt. What is it? Can you bring Sally? What is it? Can you bring Sally here? Yeah, exactly. Sally, huh? I know I've said this before, but that girl eats my guts. I don't think this will end well, but uh, I guess I got no choice. What is he muttered in disgust? Perhaps he himself was fully aware of why Sally would hate him. Okay, then I'll go look for Sally for now. 
Mr. Okita, stay here and protect the kids. What? Oh, Me? Protect them? But... I know, I know. That's why I'm leaving you with this. Oh my god. Oh boy. Well, he's clean now, so hopefully everything's okay. What if he took the gun out of his pocket and handed it to me? This is my gun. It's low on bullets, but at least it has a magazine. Use this if absolutely necessary, but don't aim to hit. Use it as a threat only, believe me. Uh, okay. Akita nervously took the gun. Okay, then I'll be going. As what as they said that and began to leave, Natsuko called out. Hold up, what to say? I'm sure be, you'll be fine without a gun. <laughs> Don't worry, I got these guns right here! And he's like flexing. <laughs> what as they slapped his right bicep and smiled boldly. I see, but still be careful out there. Huh? Yeah. And with that answer, Wadisei left the shelter. Once Wata stay left, the shelter went quiet. Oh god damn, I missed it. I missed the chapter. Oh, scene looming. Okay. Shelter went quiet. After a few silent moments, Natsuko spoke to Hita. Um, Mr. Hita? I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were an evil mastermind. Hmm? What? I read your memory without permission. That's like a major invasion of privacy, so I'm really sorry. Oh, has that been bothering you? I don't particularly mind, but the necessary step to cancel out Sabrijan's malice, wasn't it? Yes, but I saw basically all of your memory pertaining to your motive by carrying out this terrorist attack. Did you, did you have a flashback of your past memories there? Those are the memories I saw. I see. But I'm sure there weren't any memories in there that would have been problematic for you to have seen. Well, actually, <laughs> you know, you thinking about my mother and like. So honestly, it's nothing to concern yourself about. Rather, I feel you have me reaffirm my convictions. Uh, so, Mr. Okita, how about my mum? Oh, fuck, 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 Natsuko! Uh, it's not what it looks like, I swear! That my feelings are purely admiration! I haven't fantasized. Stop, please, I beg of you! <laughs> Thank you for that, cheers. I had the opportunity to recall in such vivid detail the day I swore to fight against Labo after all. In the process of following your memories, experience that day vicariously as well. I think you're a brave man, Mr. Okita. Look of regret suddenly spit, spread across Akita's face when Natsuka said that. Thank you for 
I appreciate the sentiment. But the compliment itself isn't very uplifting when the result of my bravery turned out like this, with multiple murders and a literal, actual, real-life monster on the loose. Huh? Not Naturally, I remember all the actions I took when I was infected with malice. In hindsight, they were all logical actions, but still. The me during my time, my malice was amplified, certainly still felt like me. As Akita muttered that, he looked at the gun in his hands. I shot at Captain Kasasaki with this gun, as if to push the blame of the plan's failure onto him. The realization of just how small and cowardly I am was truly frightening. Oh, dude. And as he understood the meaning behind Yukita's words. No matter how good a person might be, not a single one of them is completely free from malice. Or those who came into contact with subject and knew their to know their true selves. Whether they want to or not. They all came to realize the monster they harbored within the depths of their minds. <laughs> I never wanted to admit that part of me existed, you see. Not everything I intended to muster up all my courage and goodwill, but not only did I fail to accomplish my goals, I also ended up producing the worst possible results. Miss Rukita, that's just... Natsuko tried to say something, but he couldn't find the words. Akita shook his head as if to say it's fine and continue. That's how I've always been. No matter how much I act in accordance with my beliefs, it always turns out for the worse. I dragged so many people into my mess, and in the end, I can never save anyone. And look what I've gotten into everyone, everyone into now. I guess with justice as fragile as mine, I should never have acted on it, should I? Nasiko pondered those words. Mr. Okita's <laughs> methods were, indeed, Flawed in some places. It wasn't as if Akira had acted in accordance with a perfect sense of justice. There should have been another way. But Yuri did not judge him. But, Mr. Okita, literally, the one good thing to come out of this is because of your desire to save us that Hikorin and I were finally able to see each other. Even if you were mistaken, it's all because you persisted in acting in accordance with your beliefs. So, well, I'm not sure if it'll be any consolation to you for me to say this, but... Thank you. Once Okita heard her words of gratitude, she, he smiled faintly. Yeah. No, that's a real lifesaver. I tried to save you, but you saved me for myself. Situations all sorts of backwards. <laughs> I guess you're right. Yuri smiled at those words. Natsuko smiled as well and then turned to his thoughts. Mr. Okita's probably okay now. 
He had a strong sense of justice to begin with, after all. Now that Akito is free from malice and regret his actions, he'd probably be a reassuring ally to them. But still, I feel like the more I know about Lavo, the less I, the more I understand your feelings, Mr. Okita. Is that so? Yes, the more you learn about the inner mechanisms of Lavo, the more wicked it seems, doesn't it? I understand why you want to expose it, Mr. Okita, and why you'd want to punish the upper ranks, too. Indeed, Labo, too many secrets. It's only natural since they conduct shady business. But that's not the end of their problems. I've come to believe that it's for that reason that the antagonism between communicators and ordinary people persists in this world. The antagonism, huh? BC research is indeed necessary, and there are certain truths that should be remain hidden. But I have too many secrets, and I doubt you'll be able to under earn the understanding of those around you. To the insufficiently informed masses of ordinary people, BC and communicators are nothing more than unintelligible concepts. Yes, that's true. Those words reminded Natsuko of what he had once heard from Anna. That outside of Rokume City, the disputes between communicators and ordinary people have yet to die down. That thought made Natsuko depressed. Mr. Okita? Will there ever come a time in society when communicators and ordinary people can come to terms with each other? That's what the research in Lava was really meant to accomplish, wasn't it? Naturally, that's what I believe in, but... That's not what the high-ranking officials at Lavo think. The reason we devote ourselves to BC research is essentially for the benefit of public order. It prevents social insecurity, but... The real motivation is in short money. Ain't that, ain't that just a thing? <laughs> you can't accuse the story of being unrealistic. Money? Indeed. Labo conducts world-leading BC research and sells the results to various countries. You see, there's this foreign company called Beetlejuice New Treatments. As a patron of Lavo and Rokume City, three of them are co conspirators in a money making scheme. Is that weren't the case, Lavo wouldn't even dare conduct research on confined test subjects. If it were really for the sake of public order, they could just simply confine them. Maybe even let them live a peaceful life on an uninhabited island. But they don't. They just use them for human experimentation. That said, the masterminds behind it all wouldn't just lay their 
just threw their intentions on the table, would they? That makes me sick. Oh, wow. Jeez. Indeed, that's why it's actually more favorable for them to aggravate the antagonism between communicators and ordinary people, so. Justin Yuri interrupted Akita before he can continue. Yeah, Yuri's the one with inside knowledge. There's, I remember that dude that was bullying around um, uh, Dr. Tenkawa. He seemed like the kind of person that Okita's talking about. No, Mr. Okita. In the past, there were people who indeed conducted research for the sake of public order. Huh? For example? For example, this AD. AD's official name Baron Desire. Kodoku Nozomu Kusuri des. AD's formal name is Alone Desire. In other words, a drug for those who desire solitude. Hito to hito o tsunagu chikara BC o hitei suru kusuri nan desu yo. A drug to reject BC, the power to connect people. Nasiko gasped. True enough, with a continued dose of AD, a communicator would be no different from an ordinary person. It was the other way around. An ordinary person could come into contact with communicators without fear. AD ga fukyu sereba, ima hodo communicator ga tokubetsu shi sareru koto wa naku naru. Ano kusuri wa sono tame ni kaihatsu sareta to kikimashita. If AD became widespread, then communicators would no longer be seen as special as they are today. I've heard that that was the reason for the development of the drug. You say that, but I worked my way up in lab all the way to junior fellow status. I've never heard that AD was developed for that purpose at all. I can imagine. AD has apparently been continuously in development ever since Lava was established. What I believe happened is that over the course of several years, Lava's ethics shed little by little until the original purpose of AD was forgotten. I'm not exactly sure what was on the developer's mind when they gave AD its name at the start of development, but... Do you think they put their feelings into the name regardless of what those feelings were? Huh. I think that's a little overly sentimental, but... Akira didn't completely reject Yuri's line of thought. Natsuko likewise just barely agreed. Oh, that was one of the researchers. Oh, wow. I did not even make that connection. Thanks, Chase. So the, the guy that was bullying around uh, Dr. Shinkawa was uh, Iriguchi, one of the researchers that died. I did not know. I didn't remember that. Thank you. But are there any other examples besides that? There are. The fact of the matter is that the WX particle amplifier itself is one. We amplifier? What part of that thing is supposed to bridge the gap between communicators and ordinary people? Yuri calmly replied. Hikori, do you understand what exactly the WX particle amplifier is? BC流子の energy量を増幅させるっていうことの意味が... 
It amplifies the energy content of BC particles. BC 粒子のエネルギー量はコミュニケーターが BC を使ったときに上昇するでしょ。The energy content of BC particles rises when a communicator uses BC. Remember? 脳内で生成された情報エネルギーが外に解き放たれて。The information energy created inside their brain is emitted outside. ということはつまり。Which in other words means. Nazi got gas and surprise. No way. BC particles added the property of transmitting and propagating information energy of living creatures' thoughts. In which case, amplifying their energy meant. あの機械の中にはね、一種の人工頭脳が入っているの。You see, there is a kind of artificial brain inside of that machine. That's the whole artificial soul thing. Oh wow. Yuri calmly made that statement. Uh, an artificial brain? Is such a thing even possible with modern technology? Creating an entire brain from scratch would indeed be difficult. So, a way more fitting way to describe it would be. BC receptor no mi o m o s t e t s u k r a r e t a kikai. Jinko BC receptor n a n d e s A device that mimics the BC receptor alone. An artificial BC receptor. Oh, wow. A BC receptor. The organ relating to BC use is located in the prefrontal cortex of the human brain. Natsuko had heard about it in one of Emma's lectures. Is that true? Unmistakably, after all, we test subjects had always cooperated in the research and development of that machine. What? Ano Kikai got scurred at Noah. The machine was constructed 14 years ago when lava was established. Oh, so subject A might make a surprise cameo in the end through an artificial soul recreation. It was built based off of the data obtained from the first test, set, test subject, subject A, and approved based on the data obtained from the other test subjects. A さんは私がラボに来る前に亡くなって、N ちゃんと私も顔を合わせることはなかったけど。But Miss A passed away before I met, came to Lava, and N and I never had the opportunity to meet face to face. But 私たちから採取されたデータ、私たちが使った PC。私たちの心の一部からあの機械は作られた。That machine is constructed from the little data we produced. The BC we used. Its foundation was built from parts of our very own minds. そうして出来上がったのは意志もなく魂もなくただ強力な情報エネルギーを生成し続ける機械。And what was made was a machine that only generates powerful information energy without a will, without a spirit. WX 粒子が生成されるっていうのはね、いわば何のメッセージも込められてない PC が送信されるってことなんだよ。The generation of WX particles is, so to speak, the transmission of BC without any sort of message imbued within. そこに存在するのは漠然とした思いだけ。That exists within as a vague feeling. BC to your no look of a mots against the Mokteki. He to he told Snagayo to through my feeling is that the primal objective of the ability known as BC, the desire to connect people. So is that what it was? Nancy could notice that what Yuri said was the answer to a question he hadn't even considered up until then. 
Why would an environment full of WX particles increase the efficiency of BCUs? The answer was that WX particles themselves were filled with desire to connect people. But you know, WX particle energy is too strong. They cause damage when they enter the human brain. They also affect the genes causing mutations. The desire that WX particles have is to connect people, even if it causes pain, even if it recreates their bodies. In the case of a WX particle, exposure caused aptitude to rise. Was it because of that? Yes, though the number of people who can withstand that change is exceedingly small. But this effect definitely has the most potential to bring bridge the gap between communicators and ordinary people. After all, though it's compatible with only very select few people, that machine is still able to create a Acquire communicators. Uh -huh. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. And I think, um. I think on this. I think on this mega cliffhanger right here. Unless the next scene is right around the corner, because I'm, I'm getting a bit tired. I still haven't completely 100% recovered. I, um, I think this seems like an okay stopping point. Until like if Wadase manages to find Salyu, we're not gonna have to go inside of Rain. I do wonder what is gonna happen next, you guys. And holy shit, so. To turn ordinary people into community, that, that's just, I mean, we knew that happened with Yuri and Natsuhiko. Oh, the scene only has five minutes left? Okay, thanks, Jace. Because this scene was lasting a while, so I thought this would be a good spot. It's a machine that can turn ordinary people into communicators. <laughs> Perhaps someday everyone on Earth could become a communicator through use of that machine. And thus the disputes between communicators and normal people come to an end. Apparently some people in Labo thought that way. But do you think that's really a good thing? I believe that societally that would be extremely unnatural. That maybe we should all try to understand each other without relying on this power of ours. That is absolutely true. Yuri, the green ending of Mass Effect 3 sucks ass. Yes, I think so too. Because BC is a terrifying power where one wrong use could spell disaster for society. It all possibly better for people to come to mutual understanding without relying on that power. Same went for Natsiko and Watase. Erasing Watase's memory would turn him to the man he once was. One that would probably not conf conflict with Natsiko's intentions. That would not amount to true understanding with what to say at all. 
Incredible change which has the slightest distortion of memory. Going so far as to erase this memory would be the same as killing my mind. And that was something Natsuka wanted to avoid. So I'll believe. For what say will change his mind even if I don't erase his memories. That in time will abandon Q's mission and release Yuri. Just got to hope he gets some more character development. I think my curing his girlfriend of, of like evil brain possession will do the trick. Even if that was just wishful thinking, Natsuka still wagered on that hope. And as Natsuka pondered this to himself, Yuri sadly murmured. <laughs> But in any case, he fitting, for some reason or another, we required an ability that's more than we can handle, haven't we? In some ways, maybe it's only natural for normal people to fear us. Yes, maybe we would have been better off not acquiring such power and fitting of our stature. But if there's some sort of meaning in us getting this power, then I'd at least like to use it correctly. Despite his answer, Natsuka still did not fully understand. What was the meaning behind him getting that power? What is that? What was the correct way to use BC? At the very least, freeing everyone from malice like this. Probably the correct thing to do, I'm sure. As soon as Natsuko had thought that, a sound rang out from outside the door. Natsuko and the others gasped and turned around. Who's there? What to say? No answer. But they could hear a sound like someone pounding on the wall outside. Uh -oh. Did Miss Tachibana or someone else realize the existence of the shelter? Yeah, Wait, but is that even the case? Nobody must know the password. Even on the off chance that someone remember the keypad on the wall and repaired it, they wouldn't be able to come in. The kids were relieved at a key statement, but immediately afterwards. The sound of metal cutting metal echoed from the other side of the door. Oh, it's June! Oh my god. Meanwhile, while to stay in the surveillance room, pretending to fix the broken PA. Get it working, they could call everyone together who's been affected by malice, in theory at least. It's June! Oh god, yeah, we are doing June next, it looks like. <laughs> oh my god. All right, you guys. Here is a much better place to stay. We finished Yukita's section, and now on to I guess the, uh, because June has that fucking buzzsaw cutter, trying to cut her way through the door. I don't know how she knew that that they were there, but uh, she certainly did. <laughs> okay. So, until next time. We'll say, and uh, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow there's still a trail. Next time, tomorrow we'll say, so long, farewell, I'll be saying good night. You're all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.